next. Oh, this man right here has been doing storytelling for uh, since he was knee high to a grasshopper. Uh, he used to run his own storytelling adventure, and I heard it may come back in the fall. So let's put our hands together for Mr. Steve Cunningham. Thank you all. Boy, this is something. I'm used to having all sorts of things around me, behind me. Uh, I feel kind of naked up here. Uh, we, thank you. You notice I got to watch here and I got to watch here. Well, this one I've, I always wear when I'm storytelling, but the battery died, so it's stuck in there just to look pretty, and this one's functional. I hope I keep my 10 minutes. All right, uh, to get things started, I gotta tell you a few rules of my own here. Uh, if you see me look up like this, that means I'm looking for the flight of ideas. Uh, if you see me looking this way or that way, I'm looking to make sure my train of thought hasn't left the station. And if you see me looking down on the ground, you know I'm in trouble because I've lost all my marbles. <laughs> All right, uh, I'm going to be telling the story of Bud and Betty, uh, but first I'm going to play a little tune. Uh, I hope I do it justice. It was one of my mom's favorites, and she always liked me to play it when I had a chance. Thank you. All right. That's kind of warm up. Okay, about the flight of ideas, that's what these are for. So if I get lost. Okay, Albert, or Buddy, as he is called, up until the time he grew up, and then he was just Bud or Uncle Bud or Bud or to the professional folks, Al. My mom, Betty Lou, was always called Betty by her friends, met for the first time in kindergarten in a little town in Iowa called Van Meter. Now, Van Meter, oh, you know it. Well, I'll be darned. Thank you. Yes, it's a, a wonderful town. It's become famous here over the last few years. Uh, uh, you'll have to read up on the devil beast of Van Meter to know what I'm talking about. Uh, Dad's folks were from Van Meter, however, Mom's folks were just kind of passing through. Her and her older sister and brother attended uh, Van Meter School, same time my dad did, and Mom and Dad were in the same kindergarten, like I said. Now, at that type particular time, my Grandpa Travis, my mom's dad, uh, had been working there at the Ford Agency and got, uh, well, Grandpa drank. He's the hardest working man I ever knowed, honest to goodness. The hardest working man I ever knowed, but when he got to drinking, work became secondary, and um, orneriness came out, and he usually ended up, uh, as in the case of this time, helping out the county build roads and such. So, um, okay. I said they met in kindergarten, but that's not where this story in begins. It actually begins about 75 years before that, uh, about 1861 or so. Uh, America was at war with itself. Most of my relatives and ancestors uh, from Iowa, most of them never made it back home. Uh, they're buried in places like Jefferson Barracks, near St. Louis, Helena, Arkansas, Shiloh, and Chattanooga, Tennessee, Eastport, Tennessee, Mississippi, depending on what side of the Tennessee River you're on. 
and uh, other places like Alatoona and uh, Andersonville, Georgia. However, uh, it was a group of Iowa farm boys who climbed the unfinished state capitol here in Columbia and first lowered the state flag and the uh, Confederate state flag, Confederate States of America flag down and put up the Iowa State flag and Old Glory. You can still find that flag, the Palmetto flag, in, in Des Moines, Iowa, at the Iowa Historical Society Museum. We're real proud of that. Matter of fact, that was my first uh, time I ever uh, saw anything of Columbia, South Carolina. Uh, Okay, now it's two of those ancestors that we're going to talk about tonight. They're directly related to my story. Henry Ellsworth Banna enlisted early after the start of the war. On furlough a few months later, he was able to hold his brand new, grands, or his brand new son, uh, name of Henry Ellsworth, but from the time he was almost grown, everybody called him L. Uh, shortly after that, he returned to duty as a hospital steward and was killed and buried near Helena, Arkansas. So here was a war widow. Also about the same time, in another part of Iowa, just a few miles away, was a man named Paul Burkhart who married a lady and uh, they had a young girl named uh, Rebecca. Okay, now uh, Paul went into the war a little later and ended up actually dying in Eastport, Tennessee, Mississippi. Again, I'm not sure which because I'm not sure what side of the river he was on. But uh, he uh, was buried there and so we have another war widow. Okay, Henry Ellsworth was on my mom's side, was her maternal great-great-grandfather. On my dad's side, it was uh, Rebecca Burkhart. That was my dad's great-great-grandmother. Uh, I'm losing track, so it is. Uh, so times were hard on the war widows that uh, death pension didn't come quickly and they scrambled and scrubbed and washed and tended shop, did anything they could to make a living, tended each of them had, we found out had a little garden they put together to feed the family. Uh, eventually both women married around eight, remarried around 1870 and both families moved to Kansas and both families came back to Iowa uh, after the 1879 uh, drought. And that's where we find them then. Uh, L, uh, my mom's great-great-grandfather, had worked as a cowboy out in Can Kansas, and he uh, went to work at the butcher shop in St. Charles, which isn't far from Van Meter, and he turned around and uh, uh, married a, uh, a Sandy. Uh, there was a pass of girls in Sandyville, which was named after the Sandy family, and it was only about five miles from St. Charles, and she, he married one of them, and they had a bunch of, another passel of kids, and uh, one of them was Mona May that married Lewis Miller, who was my great-grandfather and my mom's grandfather. And Mona May and Lewis had a daughter named Pauline, only one child, before Mona May, uh, got was became ill and was ill for a long time and finally passed away when my grandmother was 16. On my dad's side, uh, just about the same thing happened. Uh, uh, Rebecca Burkhart, you remember, had moved back here into uh, um, uh, in Dallas County near Van Meter, and she met up with one of the Cunningham boys. Uh, James Cunningham had a passel of kids. Uh, he actually had three brothers that 
either died or were killed during the war. But he had one, one of those was named James Frank. Now James Frank married Rebecca and they had five kids, only three of which lived to adulthood and only one lived past the age of 40. And she died fairly young, uh, about 55 or something. So wasn't a lot of luck. But one of those men, one of those kids was named Albert. And Albert married Bertha French, one of the beautiful French girls. Well, that was their name, not, you know, not their occupation or nationality of Van Meter, Iowa. There was four sisters and they were all the talk, they, they were kind of the toast of the little town. Anyway, uh, Bertha and Albert had a uh, son and uh, when he was about 12 years old, uh, Albert uh, either got milk sick or cholera, we're not sure which. It's uh, two different diseases, but basically it comes from milk and uh, uh, he developed uh, tuberculosis and passed away when my grandpa was 12. Uh, so this left another, this left a, uh, a son without a father and over in St. Charles, just a few miles away, a uh, daughter without a mother. So uh, that's where we start now. Okay. Okay, now Bertha and, and Lewis both married again. This is important because I never knew Bertha as Bertha Cunningham. She was always Bertha's uh, grandma Sheets. Uh, he, she married a, a man named Benton Sheets uh, who had one daughter. And lo and behold, my grandpa, my great grandpa Miller married a lady named Martha Crandall who had a son. So again, there's this kind of coincidence. And uh, uh, after, uh, after all this had gotten settled and everything, uh, Pauline, my grandma, married Ray Travis. He was, a, again, an only child married into a family of a bunch of kids. Same way with my, on the other side, Homer, my Homer Cunningham, my dad's father, married a lady named Helen Boots who came from a parcel of kids. So it's again, kind of a strange thing. This is all important for the rest of the story. So keep all this in mind now. Okay, um, now these two unions, uh, at the time, they were only just a little bit apart. Oh, okay, I see. I'm running out of time here. I just got that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what we're going to do is, uh, to make a long story short, uh, My mom and dad met in kindergarten. 12 years later, they met and married. Uh, well, 12 years later, they met again at the Wakanda Country Club where my dad was working during the summer. Now they met at some kind of, a, they had some kind of a date at a dance and apparently that sparked such a flame that it caused a conflagration that caused the Wakanda Country Club to burn down. <laughs> Uh, by the way, my grandpa did quit uh, drinking um, later on in years. He, his doctor told him he was going to have to quit or he'd die. So he quit drinking liquor. However, uh, his COPD, he had to have his Robitussin four or five times a day, which, of course, is 40 proof. <laughs> so now, uh, Betty and Al spent the rest of their lives uh, coming from nothing, building a life. At times we had little or no money. At times we had to fight the weather, the storms, illness, uh, carbon monoxide poisoning. I had, uh, I almost died as a kid of pneumonia. Uh, my brother, uh, my dad, who was a commercial artist, almost cut off all of his fingers on his drawing hand. He worked a special, this is the retooling part. He worked a way of painting and drawing using his fingers like this. 
because I couldn't bend around the pencil or paintbrush, and he continued to do this the rest of his life. And that's all. Uh, I wish I had more time, but thank goodness for y'all. I do have one thing. I'm a poet. Well, no, I'm not. This is I actually wrote uh, based on my dad used to hand make cards for my mom. And this is called The Autumn of Our Years. Uh, I wrote it because of this uh, card that he had made for my mom. In the autumn of our years, we were measured not by monetary wealth, nor were we measured by personal wealth, uh, health. Rather, this rather the gift of a precious smile that truly measures us at the, in the autumn of our years. And tis that smile that brightens our days and made those dreary colors of fall truly shine as highlights in this, the autumn of our years. Thank you so much. Bye.